What's up everyone? I am Brian Horning, a cybersecurity expert and CEO of Exact IT and Cybersecurity. Welcome to our channel. Welcome to another video where we help update you on all the things that are happening out there around cybersecurity, data breaches, cyber attacks, ransomware attacks, you name it, we're going to update you. So today we're going to talk about two major cyber attacks against two major multi-billion dollar companies here in the United States. Both AT&T and Disney have announced that they've been victims of some kind of breach reach in the last 24 to 48 hours. We're going to talk about what the, happened at both of these companies, why this keeps happening, and the state of cybersecurity in the United States as it stands today, because it's not looking good out there. So remember, like the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when we put out similar videos like this. Let's get into this week's news on cyber attacks. So here we go. Let's talk about AT&T. The company just disclosed this massive data breach where hackers were able to steal the phone call records and text message records information from nearly all of their customers. The breach affected data from May of 2022 to October of 2022, and it also even included some more recent data, which is January of 2023, This that there was also a data breach disclosed. While the specifics of conversations and the details of what was in the text messages or phone calls was was not compromised. What was compromised was metadata. It's known as metadata. It's basically information about where the text message originated from, like where you were in the world when you sent it, along with who you sent it to and where potentially they were if they were maybe getting a text message from you or something like that. All of that information is contained in the metadata and it has been exposed. So this incident's a stark reminder of how vulnerable even the law largest corporations can be. Consequences of these breaches are severe on these companies. For example, these stolen records can fuel phishing email campaigns. They can help cyber criminals with things like identity theft and fraudulent purchases. It's been reported that AT&T might have paid like $370,000, which really isn't a lot of money considering all things, their revenue and what's at stake here. $370,000 to prevent the publication of the stolen information. And that didn't really seem to work. And I've explained on this channel multiple times, all the things that can go wrong on the cyber criminal side to where this data can get exposed, even though you paid them to not expose it. And a lot of times they don't even intentionally expose it. They get hacked themselves. They don't do things the way that they should do them. I mean, because God forbid they're criminals, not corporations. They're not going to destroy data, take care of their old servers or old equipment. Like you would expect a company needed to do. And quite frankly, the companies aren't doing it that well today either. So this is all compounding to just a really bad situation, not only now, but in the future. Companies become compromised and it creates a big problem for millions of Americans, billions of people around the world, a lot of cases. And that's where some of these companies are getting to with the size of these breaches. Fortunately, society and humankind has not had to deal with a lot of these identity theft problems, healthcare theft problems, especially around insurance, banking theft, meaning money basically being just withdrawn from your account without your permission. And the way that the system is set up, especially here in America today, when those bank wires happen, a lot of times you're on the hook for those. And if a cyber criminal is able to get enough information where he's able to complete a wire transfer or an ACH debit out of your account, these are all things that people are waking up to and checking their apps and their accounts and they're seeing money taken from their account. They have no idea what it is. They look into it and they learn that somebody was just able to gather enough information on them and steal their data. Now, this doesn't happen even that often right now, but it is happening and it's happening more frequently. And it's my prediction that things like this are going to happen more frequently as we move along here with technology, that cyber criminals are not going to slow down and they're going to ultimately exploit individuals through all of these hacks that they're doing on businesses. So let's shift our focus a little bit to Disney. But before I do, hey, IT pros, you want to turn your cybersecurity knowledge, your expertise, what you know into real action at your company. Well, I have a program for you. It's my Defend Your Business coaching program. And I'm giving early adopters a massive 80% discount into this program. This program is designed to teach you the business side of cybersecurity, how to get your boss 
boss, how to get your board, how to get your CEO, your CFO, to use the skills that you have learned over the years and actually do cybersecurity right. It's not about putting widgets and tools in and showing them the effectiveness of it. That is not how these people in your company make decisions on whether they're gonna move forward with this. We know how to get them to make these decisions and we're going to teach you. Use our 20 years of experience of selling cybersecurity services to businesses around the world and apply it in your business. Our team will teach you how to make cybersecurity a reality in your business. Links in the description. So let's look at Disney. Disney was hit by a hacking group called Nobulge. They claim to have leaked about one terabyte of data from Disney's internal Slack channel. Slack is a communication tool like Teams. We see a lot of companies using tools like this in their business. Many, many companies during COVID moved to Microsoft Teams as their platform of choice. And we have seen nothing but major compliance and cybersecurity issues as employees have adopted these tools and they've used these tools in ways to maybe circumvent or make their jobs easier by using these tools in a way that they weren't really designed. These are not really secure tools. These should be looked at as similar to email, but people use them like they are more secure than email. They think, oh, this is an internal tool. I'm only talking to employees in my company. And that is a fallacy. People and employees need to be trained around this stuff. They need to understand what they are allowed and not allowed to put into these communications tools and companies should have policies on what can be in there and what shouldn't be in there. At the end of the day, what we see is cyber criminals gain access to an employee's account or an administrator's account. And now they have all the information that is in these tools. We've seen your employees share proprietary information, classified government information. We found inside of Teams, inside of Slack, inside of other tools like Discord, where they're only set up for internal users, but because they think they're set up for internal users only that the rest of the world or cyber criminals won't ever get their hands on those. That is the furthest from the truth. All this stuff is connected to the internet or the cloud, or however you want to term it. And cyber criminals can get there and they can get there from the comfort of their own couch, living room, apartment, wherever they are in the world. They don't even need to break into your business. And that's what the cloud has done. It's introduced this whole issue where we need to protect the things that are up in the internet and no longer in our physical buildings and companies are really having a hard time wrapping their head around all of these things and where they live and how hackers can get to them very, very easily. So for in Disney's case, and as I mentioned, with other companies we've evaluated, we found things like username and password shared in Slack and Teams. This is all bad stuff. A cyber criminal only needs to get in there for a few seconds and they can export this stuff out and then start pouring through it later. So it's a really bad idea and you really want to restrict the extent and the sensitivity of conversations that you allow your employees to have in these tools. For Disney's case, it includes things like unreleased projects, which is proprietary information to them, potentially could cause them to lose money. Raw images, stuff that they might own but haven't patented or released yet. Source code for programs and animations that they build. And even some logins, as I mentioned earlier, people sharing logins. Hey, it's easier just work from home. I'm not in the same office. I need to get somebody logged into something here. Use my login and they send it and it happens all the time in these tools. And I'm telling you, it's a bad idea. So if you're doing any of these practices in your business, you're going to want to consider stopping them. Disney said they're investigating the matter, but the sheer volume and sensitivity of the data leaked is alarming. Same with AT&T. We have a terabyte of data that came out of Slack. I mean, that's a lot of data to come out of a, a tool like Slack, in my opinion. The breach underscores a critical issue issue in corporate cybersecurity, the misuse and handling of these new technologies. Uh, you can't roll something out like Slack or Teams and not give guidance to people on what they can and can't put in there, or they're just going to decide themselves. And that's usually a really bad situation for the company when employees decide for themselves what they're going to enter into a tool like this. Tools like Slack and Teams are essential for workplace communication, but when companies don't provide proper guidelines and understand standing, they become massive, massive security and compliance risks. Employees often share things like classified information and their personal data with HR. We've seen them do that. Like I said, usernames and passwords, proprietary information,
information, information that the company could or does make money off of. Um, you don't want this falling into the hands of a cyber criminal because they were able to log in to one of these accounts using compromised credentials or brute force attacks. Disney breach shows that this is not always the case where these major companies and companies think about this stuff and think about it ahead of time before it happens to them. So the bigger picture is it's clear. It's hard for all businesses, multi-billion dollar businesses and the smallest businesses to protect themselves from, from cyber criminals. And if small businesses are sitting here watching this video thinking that they're not a target, I just came across a threat intelligence report where we identified over 30 companies that are under 20 employees that are currently have what we know as APT or advanced persistent threat people. It means they already broke into your network and they're selling that access to people on the dark web. We just did a scan and we found 30 small businesses that are under 20 employees that are currently, they have somebody in their network, they don't know it, and access to that is being sold on the dark web. What's gonna happen there is more than likely a ransomware group is gonna come along, pay for that access, and deploy ransomware on these companies. So it's a shame. The breach at AT&T could lead to widespread identity theft and fraud with consumer data being spread across the internet like wildfire. We predict that identity theft, healthcare fraud, banking fraud will be something that most people in America will have to deal with at some point in their lives. Typically people my age and generations older than me, you really didn't have to deal with this stuff once in your life. If you were a victim of something like this, you were considered to be in the minority. And I think that that script is going to flip here with tools like this and people just entering crazy amounts of information into AI. And we haven't even seen what cyber criminals are gonna do when they break into those tools and how companies are using those. But I want you to think about that. Look at what is happening here with Teams, with Slack, and understand that it's going to happen with AI as well. So what are some things that you can do to protect yourself? Number one, make sure you and your company put MFA on everything. Because look, if a cyber criminal can guess your password, can brute force their way in, at least you have another level of protection behind that username and password. I highly recommend that you do that on everything, even for the minor accounts like social media and things like that that you don't think are that important. But a cyber criminal can take over your account and do really bad things to the people you're connected with or use your name, company, or reputation to further some kind of scam or attack on victims. Victims. So multi-factor authentication, really important, but I would also suggest you consider not using text message as your form of authentication and that you use an authenticator app because with this AT&T breach, you're gonna see a lot of problems with multi-factor authentication and text message or SMS messages being used as the communication mechanism for these codes that get sent to users to prove their identity. Use a password manager. Always use strong, secure passwords that are random and don't reuse passwords across multiple sites. Monitor your accounts. Monitor your accounts for any unusual activity and report it to either your bank or law enforcement or whoever you need to immediately so they can quickly do something about it. The quicker you can realize that somebody's abusing your healthcare information, the quicker you realize that somebody's taking money out of your bank account, the quicker that the entities that you're doing business with, that they're taking it from, can step in and maybe help you out. If you don't get to ACH transfers quick enough, they're gone and there's nothing your bank can do about it. So you got to almost be checking or have alerts set up for even the smallest amounts of money. We see cyber criminals who do multiple transactions over a course of two or three weeks under $500 each. But by the time they're done, they steal three or $4,000 from people before they catch it. It's really important that you understand that there's enough information out there on you and most people in the world where cyber criminals can really start just figuring out where you bank and start taking money from you. It's really that bad. So in conclusion, these recent breaches on AT&T and Disney, they highlight the ongoing battle against cyber threats. Even the biggest companies are not immune to this battle and it's crucial for both businesses and individuals to start taking the necessary proactive steps in cybersecurity and to protect this information. We're just rolling out technology without any thought to this stuff and it's causing massive, massive problems for a lot of companies out there. And like I said, go 
governments, major companies, small companies. We're all behind the eight ball and our customers are suffering. They're the ones that, who are the real victims as a result here. They're the ones paying the price and businesses need to realize that. And then eventually the consumer will start scrutinizing who they're doing business with based on their cybersecurity as this becomes a bigger and bigger problem for the average human being. Stay informed, stay secure. Remember, protect your data. Stay tuned to our channel for more cybersecurity updates and news like this. If you have any comments or questions, love to hear from you down below. If you're an AT&T customer or you work at Disney, what's happening out there? Let us know. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe.